Okay, let's move on to question two. Question two is quite a tricky one, right? So let's make sure that we're on top of the information. Again, if you're not understanding the information, it will be contextualized by the questions that follow. So don't spend too much on the, uh, time on the situation before you've looked at the question. So it says, after an examination, a total of 2,808 mathematical literacy scripts were marked at a particular marking station or sparking center. Annexure A, now when it says, as soon as it says annexure, go find the relevant one. Here's the one that you need. Make sure that you have it, right? Shows data about the marking team, hours worked, tariffs, and the amount claimed for marking and moderation of these scripts. The marking process was as follows. The first day of marking was a Monday, but it only started at 2. Thereafter, marking started at 8 and ended at 8 on a full marking day. Uh, paid working hours excluded tea, lunch, and supper breaks. Okay, not a problem. The marking team was paid a travel allowance of 3 Rand 26 for a total of 11,542 kilometers traveled. So we know that there's going to be a lot of expenses here. Expenses for marking, expenses for traveling. They're probably going to want us to account for all of this. But we're just going to focus on the situation and read the questions as they come. It then says, quite importantly, right, I'm going to skip back, that paid working hours exclude all the times they had breaks. This table at the bottom here indicated the times they had breaks. So here tea was 15 minutes, lunch was 45, second tea was 15, and supper was 45. So add all of those together and you get two hours. Please remember there are 60 minutes in an hour, so you mustn't forget that. It then says use Annex J, which I indicated you should have, avail you should have available with you, right? And let's answer the questions that follow. So question 2.1.1 says, determine the total amount claimed by the chief moderator and the chief internal moderator. So let's go see. So here's my chief moderator, right? That's how many hours he or she worked. And here's the tariff that he or she was paid. Same for the internal moderator. So you see that they worked the same number of hours and they paid the same amount per hour. So we can just say hours worked times the tariff, and that gives me the total amount claimed. We can times that by two because it's the same for both of these both of these roles. So let's write that down. Please remember when you're starting a new question. Oh, sorry, I'm like throwing things around here. Um, please make sure that you are starting on a new paper. I mean, a new page, right? Um, because that's what the instructions say. So make sure that you have that available. So it's two point one point one. Um, so two point one point one, and we're going to say two for my two people times 79, because that was the hours that each of them worked. How much were they paid per hour? This amount. All you need to do is go and pop that into your calculator. 2 times 79 times 244.35. And your answer is, and remember to do it in Rand, 38607.30. Okay. So that's how much they were paid together. Right. Let's then go over here and continue reading. I'm just going to move my annex off to the side. 2.1.2. .2. Okay, it says calculate the value of A in table 2. So let's go here. Where's table 2? You could be saying, oh, where is it? It's over here. Don't worry. It's here in the annex. What is the value of A? It is the number of hours worked by the senior moderator. Now, remember I've just told you that this thing, this column over here, is just the hours worked times by the tariff. So if we have the total amount and the hours worked, we just say the total amount divided by the tariff per hour, and that will give us the number of hours that have been worked. So it's all about understanding the mechanism that's happening here. Okay, so 2.1.2, we say 13763.75 divided by how much this person would be paid per hour. Put it into your calculator. And that would be 13763.75 over 211.75. And this person worked 70, I mean 65 hours. Now, please be careful, right? You can't just write 65, right? It could be then 65 bananas. You need to write hours, right? Because that indicates what it's talking about. And it's always important to indicate what you're talking about. Okay, let's now go into 2.1.3. 
this is where we're getting towards the questions that have slightly higher mark allocations. So here we have to be quite careful of what's happening because there's a lot of moving pieces. So it says markers are allowed a maximum number of marking hours based on the following formula. Right, it says number of marking hours equals the total number of scripts. Now, what's the total number of scripts? Well, it's that number there. So make sure that as you're reading, you're like, hmm, where have I seen these numbers? Times 28 divided by the number of markers. Now, let's go back to our annexure because that told us about it. What was the total number of markers? Some of you might want to say 30, but they, those are not all markers. We want these guys here. Only the 23 are markers, so be careful, okay? So it says, using the above formula, determine the expected time and the day on which the markers are likely to finish marking. Right, so when did they start? They started on Monday at 2. We're going to work out how many hours, right, They the number of marking hours that they had, right, and we're going to try then figure out when they finished. Okay, so it's a couple of moving pieces here, but let's firstly go plug into this formula. So... I'm going to say 2.1.3, always important to reference properly. So number of marking hours, right? The total number of scripts was 2808. I showed you where that came from. Times by 28. Why am I times by 28? Well, that's literally just what they told me to do, right? Number of, um, number of markers, we said was 23. I showed you that in the table. We times that by 60. Why are we timesing by 60? Well, because that's what they told us to do. Okay, so don't stress about any of that. Just continue going as you need to, right? So do that and let's plug that into our calculator here. Okay, put that in, put this in and let's go. Right. So that is 56.9739 dot, dot, dot hours. Now, let's just round this off, right? And we'll make that 57 hours, okay? Now, you might be saying, but Margie, I don't, why, why, why am I rounding it off to 57? Well, I'm just doing that for now because you see how close it is to 57. And because they asked us, right, to determine the expected time, um, and the day on which the markers are likely to finish, it's a little bit tricky to use those decimal places. So just round it off and the memo allows for that, okay? So they started on Monday at 2 p.m., okay? So let's just check. They started on Monday at 2 p.m. So do you see here, they would have started there just after lunch, so they didn't have any of that side of the day. They would have had tea and supper, so we take off one hour there. So from 2 until 8, so we had 2 until 8 p.m. That's 6 hours. But we're going to say minus 1 hour for breaks. Okay. So they had 5 hours of work on the Monday. Okay. So now we have 52 hours left. Okay. Then let's just work out per day what they would have worked. They start at 8 and they finish at 8. That's 12 hours. Right. But they have 2 hours of break. So each, each day... They have 10 hours of work, okay? So 52 then just means five full days, okay? So we go Monday, we go Tuesday, we go Wednesday, we go Thursday, right? You should be making sense of this. I'm literally just counting five days from Monday. So there's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, those are my five days, right? And then we have two hours left. And the two hours would be on Sunday. And that would just run from 8 to 10, right? And we see that that's when they would have had their first break. So they would have finished, right, on Sunday at 10 a.m. Okay, this is a, quite a meaty question, right? And it's quite a few marks, but you'll see that if you work through it the way that I've asked you to and shown you to, shown you, shown you to do, you then should see how this all runs together. Okay, it's easy to get mixed up, but let's just make sure that we're seeing those constituent parts. Okay, I'm just going to go into a new page just so that you can see the full, the whole of the next question properly. So now we're doing 2.1.3. Okay. So let's see what it said here. It said, determine the actual. So here we did the expected, right? Because 
this was the, the formula that they had for the expected number of hours they had. They were going to use to mark these scripts. But that doesn't mean that that's what happened in reality, right? We know what, what happened in reality would have been in this annexure. Okay, so we're going to see that. It says determine the actual day and time when the mark is finished according to the hours claimed if marking started at 2 p.m. on Monday. So it's saying, yeah, you said it was 57. That was what was expected, the maximum amount. But that's maybe not what the annexure says. And let's go to the annexure. The annexure says, well, they only use 52. So we said that with 57 hours, right, we said with, let me just move this down, right? So we said with 57 hours, they would finish on Sunday at 10 a.m. But now with 52 hours, we have to backtrack a bit, okay? So we use the same calculation we did before, except all we get up to is we get up to Saturday, okay? So what we have is we still have these five hours for Monday. So I'm going to write this out, right? We still have the five hours for Monday. But then we have 47 hours left over. Okay, which means full, four full days, right? Which would be Tuesday through Friday, okay? So that would be 40, right? Because each day, what did we say? Oh, sorry, let me move this over. What did we say? We said each day, right? Each day they work a full 10 hours, okay? So now that's of the 47. So here's seven hours which he works on or which they work collectively on Saturday, okay? So now we need to say, on Saturday, let's go back to our original question, where would it be at the seven hour mark? So, two hours to get to 10, okay? Then they take a 15 minute break, but then they have from from 10.15 to, to 1.15, that's another three hours. So there's two hours, there's three hours, okay? Then we see over here that this is two, another two hours and 15 minutes, okay? But how many hours did they have to work in this day? Seven, so that's five, and that is seven hours and 15 minutes. So we know that they'd finish just before T2, so they would finish at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Okay, they would finish at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Okay, so it's a little bit trickier because it's maybe not the easiest for you to understand, right? But it is one of those things that you need to kind of like work through and see, okay, what is it that I'm doing? Let me make sure that I'm on top of it. Okay, but now you could actually be saying to me, Margie, you've done this wrong. Okay, and I have done it wrong. And I always want you to test me because between two and quarter past three, is that two hours and 15 minutes? No, it's one hour and 15 minutes. So actually we're not done yet because that would only be six hours and 15, okay? So we need another 45 minutes, which we haven't accounted for. Those 45 minutes actually do come after T2. So we say 3.30, right, plus 45. So what time? It's gonna be 4.15 p.m., okay? And that will be your answer. Now, you could be saying, Margie, why are you putting this video up? Are you making mistakes? Well, I think it's important for you to see me make mistakes because these are the mistakes that you often make, right? And I want you to be careful because I just assumed that it was two hours and 15 because what did I do? I looked at the 13 there instead of saying that's the end and then counting it correctly. So be careful. It's very easy to lose mark when it comes to time questions. Let's move on to C. Okay, so that was B. Please make sure that you, you're putting in these A's and B's, right? Not just the 2.1.3, also put in the, in the two, uh, put the A's and B's and C's, because I've been forgetting that. Okay, let's now do C. It says, give one possible reason why the mark is finished before the expected time. This is a thinking level four question. It's just sort of wanting your opinion. So you could say they, um, some questions weren't answered maybe, some questions uh, weren't answered, right? Um, so obviously, if, if a student doesn't answer their questions, then it's easy marking, right? You just say naught and you continue. Maybe some, some questions weren't answered or they worked quickly. Um, you only have to say one of these, right? I'm just giving you some options. They were quickly um, or um, 
they just think, what else it could be? Or it could be they took shorter breaks, right? It could be any of these things, right? You only have to write one, but I just wanted to give you a couple of options. Let's now go to 2.1.4, which is then our last question of this 2.1 sub question. It's six marks, a fair amount, but we're going to do our best. It says, a total amount of 400,000 Rand was budgeted for the marking team at this particular marking center. Verify whether this amount would be sufficient to pay the team for transport, marking, and moderation. So it's the whole team. It's not just the markers. So what we need to do is we need to go and let's do things separately. So let's actually start with our transport because that's easy enough. So we say transport it was 3 Rand 26 per kilometer and this is how many kilometers were traveled. Okay, that's easy enough. 3.26 times by 11, 542. Okay, so that's how much is for transport. Oh, sorry, I just had load shedding. Love that for me. All right, I'm just going to continue. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we're almost done with this question, so I'm just going to continue. So it's transport. Let's now look what else we have here. Right, we have marking and moderation. Let's go to our annexture. Our annexture over here, we know that we are adding up all of these amounts here. Okay, so you could be saying, oh, but we don't have all those amounts. Not a problem, right? We worked those out already. Okay, so let's go work it out. Okay, so it, uh, we're going to say, what did we say for A? If we go look at back at A, it was for, for my CM and my IM, we said it was 38,607 and 30 cents. If you don't know where that comes from, go back to um, 2.1.1. So that's those two. Then we have a senior moderator and we have uh, all our markers. So let's work out each of these amounts. Okay. Now, this amount over here is four per person, importantly. So this is going to be 13763.75. That's given. Over here, it's going to be 10.16. I mean, 10166. But that's per marker. How many markers are there? 23. Over here, this is per senior moderator. So that's actually going to be times five. So be careful that you're doing that. Okay, so we've already counted uh, for this from 2.1.1. And now we need to, sorry, just to make sure you see, we need to add all of these together. So be careful. The biggest thing here is just to make sure that you are typing this in correctly. Apologies if you can't see my calculator very well. But I'm literally, all I'm doing is I'm adding all of these together. So I put that in a plus. I put that in next, I plus, and then I put that in next. So you go do that while I'm doing mine on my calculator. You do that too, right? And let's just see whether we get the same amount, right? Um, sometimes it's very easy to forget the odd thing, right? It's very easy to be like, oh, I got it right. And then you just kind of think that you're done. And then sometimes you're not done. So just be very careful to make sure that you are on top of it because it, it is easy to mess up. Okay, so this here, my total, right, yeah, if you add them all together, is 341, right, 244.05, okay? So now we need to add our transport and our marking costs together. So do that on your calculator, right? Add what you've put in there already with the transport, and then you say total, you need to total it up, and give me a total. Okay, there's my total. Now you could be saying, ah, wonderful, I'm done. Yes, you're done with your calculation, but you need to do some interpretation. It said, a total amount of 400K was budgeted. It said, verify whether this amount, right, is sufficient. Yes, it is sufficient, right, because it's less than 400K to pay for all of these things, all these costs. Then you say, therefore, 400,000 is sufficient, right? You have to put that little conclusion in so many of you forget that so be very careful there perfect we're done with 2.1 apologies for the lighting issues but i hope that you understood the math there